I have a question for Lisa. I have a question for Lisa. If Lisa likes Joven's beard? No. Oh, no one yeah. cares about no. your beard. I think it's great. Let's talk about the beard exclusively. <laughs> okay. right Today's podcast brought to you by Joven's beard. It's not really we're talking about it. It's it's, it's an intervention about your beard. We're all that makes more sense. Friends. Lisa, but before we start, did you see they're coming out with a new Earth Defense Force? No! What? Are you serious? I'm pretty That's... sure they Play are. It together, please. Yeah. Yes. What? They already did. They already yeah, did. I guess they you have to come back to Ogside when that comes out. When was the? When did we film that? Where's that React video? Earth That's like ten years ago. Earth Defense for. Uh, oh, Earth, a Earth Defense for six announcement trailer came out four days ago. So when it wow, comes out, how topical. When it comes out, we demand that you come on the channel and play Earth Defense Force <laughs> with us. <laughs> Oh, my uh, favorite game of all yeah. time. <laughs> was not a good game. No, was not a good was game. Fun, though. It's not good, it but have it's to silly. be a good game to be a favorite no. game. Yeah. yeah, Lisa made it fun. Hey, everyone, welcome to the Ogsog podcast where we've got special guest, not Sohinka. Sahinka. Sahinka. Bazinga. That's the name I dance under, so. All right, maybe too much coffee. Hi everyone, welcome to the Ox Song Podcast, where we've got not so hinky special guest Lisa Foyles. Ah, uh, that's me. Um, uh, not everyone Lisa gets Foyles. a clap, by the way. So <gasps> this is know. true. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, last time I I heard Laser Corn Woo was on like the third whiskey that I bought him. He's like three. Woo! <laughs> and then uh, there wasn't much after that. Yeah. Well, we all go we go away for spring break every year, don't we? And then you will you will constantly. Yeah, yeah. You, you, laser corn yeah. is a woo corn. I, my, my voice is, is thrown out up. when I get back from all the wooing. <laughs> <laughs> it takes me a couple days to bring um, it down. What's funny is laser corn dresses like he's always on spring break. So <laughs> this is just how I live my life, baby. Godzilla shirt today. Whoa, I don't know. One spring break it. at a time. <laughs> That actually is a dope shirt. I'm, I'm a oh, little jealous. Uh, so Lisa Foyles, I think if if there was an award, an Ogsog award for like favorite go to guest, it it has to be you. Right, Lisa? Because I think you've been you've been on Smosh Games. You've been now on Ogsog. You've been on uh, the Joven Shire channel when we did Stuff of Legends. Um, I was... Uh, you know, to to promote that for a moment, I was actually talking to someone recently about that show because we have four players playing D&D and stuff of legends. And you're one of those characters. You play Majelica, a mage. Love that name. Yes. Uh, we were trying to figure out who the main character of that is. And based on like the essence of a story and how you'd break it down, Majelica is the main character of Stuff of Legends. I thought I it was of more of an downs. ensemble cast. An ensemble. You can have an ensemble well, cast, but it's office, still. But we all know it's Pam's story. It is Pam's story. <laughs> all right. um, but Majelica, you know, she starts off. Uh, she's not really confident. She's trying to break away from like her father's shadow. Doesn't know if she can cut it as a mage. And then, you know, by the end is is rolling net 20s like the best of them. So I'm, I'm Harry Potter. I'm Frodo. I'm all of, I'm the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> and Laser Corn, you're comic relief. We all know that, you know, I'm hand, yes. trying to find laser the good comic fight. relief. Yeah. And you come in with a joke about like, ah, oh, it's yeah. driving me nuts. I'm a pirate or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, <laughs> Um, right? Yeah, yeah, I was a but, pirate. I kind of view myself as a, a Jack Sparrow type character who is the comic relief, but also the main character, and everyone cares the most about him. But you know, that's just. I'm pretty that's sure just, if you ask Mari, Will Turner is definitely the main character of that one. Actually, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Swan Turner uh, yeah. is the main character of Pirates of the Caribbean. She carries it through. Before we go too far into our favorite things and who's the main character of what, uh, hi Lisa, we, it is really great hi. to have you here. Uh, so some of you guys might know Lisa Foyles from <laughs> the channels we've been on, or perhaps you've seen her as an uh, all that alumni from Nick Nickelodeon. Uh, you were also the UFC host, and currently you've got some new stuff that's that seems to be popping off. Uh, what do you have going on right now, Lisa? I wanted to see how far down my Wikipedia page you were going to go. <laughs> Just start from the top. Like, oh, he's, he's definitely reading off a Wikipedia page. Right it's now. like it's, uh, a, it's IMDb bottom to the top. <laughs> no, yes. Uh, most people know me from all that. That was uh, my main gig for four years. And you were saying you were giving me some kind of you know, award earlier mm -hmm. about being mm -hmm. on all the channels. And I wanted to say it, it means just as much to me as my kids' choice awards. So, oh, so thank you. Bye. Look at 
that. Yes. What? It means just as much. That's the only thing that matters. In fact, I'm going to need a, a selfie with just you and that so I can use that for the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are, are, you are mailing me a physical award, though, right? Yes. <laughs> and yours does have a kaleidoscope in it. I'm going to put It has up. a kaleidoscope in the anus? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Don't call Lisa, it an you're, anus. You're, you're the, what else would you call the back so end of a the blimp? The blimp does not have an anus, Joven. Where do you think the helium escapes from when it needs to come no. back down to Earth? Not like that. And I don't know how blimps work. <laughs> I assume it farts its way down. It sure does. Yeah. Can Science. I say, Lisa, it's just so nice having a fellow Nickelodeon alum on the show. Because as you know... <laughs> I did exactly one episode of the show Game Shakers. So you and I, I was also are, on are, Game Shakers. Are Nickelodeon alum. Yeah, we're alums of the same show. It's so nice. That's these I, I feel like these non-Nickelodeon people I'm on the channel with just don't understand us sometimes. So it's nice. As a <laughs> Disney Channel alum contractually, I don't know if we're allowed to be on the same show together hey, now. Are you Disney, Jovan? I was yeah. on Disney. What? See, there you go. Team Disney. Oh, rivalry. I was also on Disney. I was also on oh, Even okay. Stevens. I'm like Catwoman. I watched oh, the that's line between right. the that's me. I loved that show. Uh, <laughs> wait a second. All right, hold on. Uh, Lisa, you've got a band and a podcast. Yes. Kids with swim sweet deets on those. <laughs> wow, this it's so weird, uh, like, pimping my stuff at the beginning of, of a show, because usually it's, like, the last two No, we get it where the retention's hot. Yeah, yeah, when no one else, when no one's there, and everyone's done yeah. listening, and then you're like, follow my socials. No, I'm in a metal band. I sing in a metal band. I think every Nickelodeon alum eventually turns into a metalhead. I think that's what the channel does. <laughs> to you. Uh, so, Mari um, just isn't randomly pointing at her chair. That is merch. She's repping some Bye -bye. merch back there. Yes. That's one of our shirts. We have, we're so cool. We have a specific shirt for every song uh, that we have that we've released. Like a cool oh. themed shirt. So that one is for our song called The Spider Queen. So if you're a fan of like the Misfits or like early AFI, like Danzig, like that type of music, that's totally our vibe. Uh, we're called Von Bolt. We have been releasing a bunch of new songs. We have a new album coming out in like two weeks. Nice. Which could stoked. possibly when this video goes live okay, based on uh, schedules. October 6th is like our big uh, album release party. So that's like around the Wait, time. Wait, there's a party? Out. Oh, shit. oh, wait, I'm, I'm going to so be sorry. in. Only two uh, of you are invited. I totally oh, forgot. okay, that's fine. Only that's two whatever. of us? Okay. Which two? It's producer Paco and Mari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't know if you're invited or not, you're the one not invited. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Damn. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure we get links to the new album, uh, yes. places where we can listen to your music. We've got those down below. And uh, not only am I a fan of your podcast, I'm a fan of your podcast uh, co-host, actually. Yes, I do host a, a podcast with my cat. And I know that's crazy, <laughs> but it's true. And I didn't mean for it to happen. I built a podcast set in my in my house. I got two chairs. I got two mics, hoping I would have a friend to host it with. <laughs> um, and turns out my stupid, fat, orange cat, Kevin, just adopted <laughs> the chair for himself. And now he's trained me, or I've trained him. I'm not sure how it happens. But every time he hears me fiddling with the cameras, he sprints down. I hear him jump off of his cat tree. I think there's an earthquake in my house. Oh, Kevin's jumping. <laughs> Down from his cat he sprints downstairs like he doesn't weigh 30 pounds and he hops in his chair <laughs> and then he just like hosts the podcast with me and looks at me really judgmentally as I talk. Um, so I host a, a podcast <laughs> with a cat unintentionally. Um, as, <laughs> as, as, yes, me and Kevin. Uh, uh, as a host of yeah, just another podcast in the world, even I can say, Lisa Foyles, that is the best podcast. So congrats on that. Oh, uh, there's you. a second yes. Uh, award in the mail and there too is a kaleidoscope in the anus of that award too so you'll have a little collection going um so today's just a normal podcast we have some fun topics um it, just to let you guys know if you want to see we have an extra topic that is only going to be on patreon uh so if you want to check that out there's a link down below for that as well on our patreon we have extended versions of all of our videos 98 percent of our videos some are just so perfect we have to share them with the world as is but we also do reacts to old videos where you know what we might have to do a a reactive when Lisa Foyles was on Smosh Games because that was a that was a fun video. Weird game, fun video. I have a question about this, Lisa. I was trying to find your your first sort of foray into the YouTube world. Um because Ooh, I mean you are good question. 
I okay so you and I we we met for the first time a few days ago which is bananas but I think we've known of each other and we have so many mutual friends and we've known each other for years like I have been enamored by your your career for so 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 long um and vice versa by the way what vice versa like I've always been such an admirer of yours and we're both dancers like we both have that dance background so love talking about that but yeah we've known we've known of each other for so long but we actually grabbed coffee human to human human to human in the flesh we're there both of us sitting across from each other we're talking in real life it was awesome yeah Lisa (laughs) sent me a a selfie of the two of you and I I think my response just really was as honest as it could have been I had so much FOMO I felt it in my bones (laughs) yeah Uh. It's okay, Um, we're making a Vegas trip, baby. Vegas trip? Not to a release party. Uh, (laughs) Apparently not. (laughs) Only producer Pogba and Mari. Lisa, Lisa, yes, ma'am. how did you get into like working with people on YouTube? The, 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 the video that I could find that went back the furthest was one with the game station for Fistful of Rupees, and it's you, Dodger. Oh uh, shoot, Jesse, Jesse Cox. Cox. <laughs> yes, Gerard. That's right. There. Smith. Love that circle. Oh yeah, isn't I that mean, crazy? Yeah. What What was your first one on YouTube? So I don't know how far back you want to go, but basically, um, back when like the freaking Wii was like coming out, like that really exciting time in video games where like it was the 360, it was the PS3, it was the Wii. There was all this like. The height crazy. of the console wars. Yes, it crazy advances in technology. You know, now you see games and you're like, oh, it's a little better from last mm-hmm. year's game. But that was when it was like, oh my gosh, look what they're doing with video games. So that was kind of when I was like really in the industry and I was writing articles for Kotaku. And I remember I would go, thank you. Um, And I would go up to Steven and Brian who worked at Kotaku and I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm an on-camera girl. I'm an actor. Like, let me make videos for Kotaku. And they're like, I don't think it's going to work. Jeez. I I swear to God, for a whole year, for a whole year, they're like, I don't know if people want to watch someone talking about video games. I just don't know if it'll work on Kotaku. Like, I don't know. And I'm like, please just let me host a show about video games. And they're like, I don't know. I swear. That's how far back it goes. We're like, they were unsure about video content. (laughs) They were like, "Ah, hilarious. Like, Like, I know it's going to get into that. That We just want Let's Plays with no faces. Wow, they screwed up. The written word, that's uh, that's where really the future. They screwed up huge. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bring magazines back, but I don't know about this video content. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. So finally, I just kind of did it anyway. I just started like making video videos about video games. I was just that passionate. I loved talking about them. I loved like uh, keeping it comical because I always felt video games should be fun and silly. Sorry, microphone. Um, but uh, but yeah, and I moved to, to L.A., and I wanted to get more into that. And somehow the game station just kind of like adopted me. And uh, the game station at the time, they kind of represented like a bunch of different YouTube channels. And I was sort of for hire by them. They would kind of take me and put me on different people's channels. A gaming bounty hunter. Yeah. That was me. And I, I mean, I got paid for it. It was awesome. I got paid to be on YouTube channels without the pressure of hosting my own YouTube channel. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, didn't have to, nice. I didn't have to build a following. I didn't have to deal with algorithm. I didn't have to do with any of that like I just got paid to go be on other people's channels um so the warp zone was one of those first channels and I did a great Charlie's Angels parody called Miyamoto's Angels I think that was the first one that that was before Fistful and uh it was back when you could do like choose your own adventure stuff with YouTube. Remember how you could like at the end of a video is like which girl do you think yeah yeah they had the uh the cards you could click it it would lead you to a different you video could, and then you can still do that they have the the end screen elements i think markiplier right. did okay, a well fine yeah. fine huh? whatever sure you know everything it's fine I, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway that's i'll just mean. say it <laughs> okay well actually yeah so we did the charlie's angels one and uh, you got to choose between samus uh, or Princess Peach, or Princess Zelda, of like which Miyamoto's angel was going to win the battle. And uh, if you picked me, I was the winner. I was the winning one of that. And then uh, I remember the guys at Game Station talked to me after the Miyamoto's angel, and they're like, hey, we're thinking about doing like this spaghetti Western epic three-part series about the Legend of Zelda, and we want you to play Princess Zelda. And I'm like, I'm in. Like, I didn't even let him finish the <laughs> sentence before. I'm like, I'm there. I, what's my Spaghetti Western, in. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. I'm in. 
Uh, I mean, the good, watch the, it. It's yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly is one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, I love that. Movie oh, so it's much. hilarious that Sohinky's not here to to hear this because uh, it always then leads into the same conversation about a fistful of dollars versus uh, the good, bad, and the ugly. It's fun. Oh, it's that whole universe of spaghetti western. Oh yeah, he and I would have gone on. Uh, uh, and, yeah. and then recently, you made it back to the warp zone, right? For just uh, Justice League music video, where you were Wonder Woman. Yes, I've actually kind of been working with Warp Zone a little more behind the scenes for years. I do a lot of VO for them now. Uh, mm. Like their Mandalorian video, I was like the narrator, the like, meet Din Djarin and his little baby <laughs> bro. Um, so I get I to do some I of them every once that. in a while, which is great because those guys are like my brothers. I love them so much. Uh, but yeah, I got to be Wonder Woman in the the DC parody of handing it over to uh, James Gunn. So. Man, uh, the Gunniverse. Gunniverse. No one calls it that. Gunniverse. <laughs> the Gunniverse. The Gunniverse. Gunniverse. Um, great. Well, we've got some fun topics that I think all of us have prepared well for. Um, they're all a little relating to our special guest today. Um, and first and foremost, you know, we talked about your band um, and, you know, uh, the the music that we love today m- might be great, but might not have been the best choice throughout our musical histories. So I want to talk about uh, bands, like the cringiest bands that we loved or maybe still love. Maybe there's still a little love for them now. Um, Lisa, before we go into the cringiest, like what stuff that you're listening to now that might have inspired or just loving for fun that's not cringy before we jump into that? I just like that you're like, oh, Lisa's in a band. So let's talk about cringy bands. Like Lisa's <laughs> band is probably <laughs> It's like, yeah, uh, your yeah, band is my cringy band. band. How did you know my answer? <laughs> All right, I, cha- I got to change it up now. Joe, Hold Joe on. I'm trying to real backpedal in the moment right here. Uh, <laughs> sweating yeah. bullets. <laughs> no, sweat I love bullets. you. I'm just giving you I crap. sweat ammo. Um, no, when I read that uh, this was one of the topics, I got very, I got very, very excited because... Uh, Recently, here in Vegas, so I live in Las Vegas, which is the home of just crazy shows all the time. Every night of the week, you can go to a different, you know, you know, you can go to see Thunder from Down Under. You can go see I went Celine to Dion. Spice, is Celine she Celine still Dion. there? She's, She's not. not still here, uh, but like Katy Perry, like you know, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry's there? just like mm-hmm. all Carrie Underwood, like all sorts of crazy, you know, acts every night of the week. And I recently went to a Spice Girls like tribute show. Ooh. And it was such a blast. I dressed up as Sporty Spice. I know what you're Oh, thinking. I saw it. Yeah, I saw an Instagram post. Why didn't you post. go ginger? Well, turns out when you're sporty, you get to wear tennis shoes. And that's <laughs> the best decision I've ever made going out on the Vegas Strip. Not platforms. <laughs> so I went to Spice Girls. And I, I was not really a Spice Girls fan, so I was kind of like pretending like I knew the words as I was just um, dancing. But <laughs> the band that I did love more than Spice Girls, so it's, as soon as I read Cringy Bands, uh, this came to mind. I was a huge Whoa. Bewitched fan. <gasps> Do you say know Bewitched? Say la vie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A Scottish girl band? No, yeah. no, no, Can no, no, you no, t- no, 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 Irish. Irish, 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 Irish. School, <laughs> Irish girl band. Uh, yeah, Kevin could you? great Irish accent. You know, yeah. I know. Or Scottish. Uh, so, she apparently can't tell the difference between Scottish. <laughs> same country, right? Same, same. Uh, it's all UK to me. Uh, yeah. I wish that they had done more. They were great dancers. They had some real bangers on that album, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's one of those pop songs. band. Bewitched? Oh my gosh, it was like Irish Spice Girls. B like uh, like Asterisk Asterisk like, yeah. Witch. You that, know, that, I remember this band because of the asterisk, but I, I can't yeah. remember a single song. But <laughs> good branding with the asterisk. I was gonna say bad because oh, they. I thought that's what killed them because they were they're pretty much unsearchable. No one's gonna find <laughs> yeah, out if you're, if you're how on, to do an asterisk on a keyword. To, they were yeah. pre-internet. I'm like I should pre-internet. look up Bewitched. Oh, then I gotta figure out how to do an asterisk. I just give up. <laughs> like, I was just, just talking of... about this about how like in the Napster Kazaa bear. I'm adding this to my Spotify. Days. I don't know if we can even talk. I'm sure, we can talk about it. Yeah, but we can. Used to like torrent songs or whatever, or like you know illegally download songs. How hard it was to find songs by the band live <laughs> because yes. their name was live and then yeah. you search for live and like every like oh you know this in sync live like every other song with the word live that's inside. funny uh, did they accidentally uh, shoot themselves genius. in the foot there yeah <laughs> oh 
I mean, uh, nobody downloaded their stuff illegally because nobody could find their music. Oh, I thought. Uh, I but know. what about people kind of looking? Genius. What about people looking to buy like a live album though? Do you think there were people that are like, oh yeah, I should get a live album, and they go on like Amazon or whatever, and they're like, I I can't find them. I'll just get like Chad Kroger live or something. Well, no. Here's the thing. Back in the day, we yeah. had to go physically to like to a the Best CD buy store if we yeah, wanted right. to buy it. That's true. Tower Records represent. Yes, that's Amiba. true. So I remember good. there was yeah, a no CD store Amazon called Coconuts that I would go to. <laughs> it's called Coconuts. <laughs> but it sounds like a real Ohio thing. Yeah, it was, Ohio, it was real Ohio. Coconuts? No. It was, it was next to the hibachi place. And if we were good Ooh. through the hibachi dinner that my parents sometimes took us to, sometimes we you get got to go hibachi pick, and a CD and in the same we day. We get to go pick out a CD. If we didn't cause havoc and ruin That's my what we call Ohio rich what right, right there, my dude. First, uh, what was the CD, the first CD you ever bought? Oh no. <laughs> it was it was Our Lady Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be waving right? my hand. Does anyone That's remember Canadian, that? Canadian sing. band, right? Yeah. No. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Uh my first Maybe. CD was Weird Al Yankovic's Running with Scissors. Good one. Wow. That's a good one. Yeah, it's a good CD. My first CD was the Sailor Moon soundtrack. Wow, yeah. very cool. Some class. Which I got at Best Buy. Nerdy through and through. Mine was Green Day Dookie. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh, Mari just being super cool over here. Just like, no, I was just following cool. the rest of the kids in my class. <laughs> mm. um, uh, so Lasercorn mentioned an interesting name, and uh, I would like to talk about one of my beloved uh, cringy bands. Uh, kind of comes in a two-part. I do. I, I feel like I need to mention my love for Three Doors Down. Uh, that was like my band in high school. Big Three Doors Down fan. Uh, a lot of their albums. You still call me Superman. Was that them? Yeah. Yep. That was That's them. That was down. Kryptonite. Kryptonite. Uh, some of the. I, I was an angsty young child who didn't know how to, you know, feel the right emotions. So like they were hitting some, you know, dark, cringy places that I really needed. And I was happy with like liking them until I found out that they like had played at the the Trump oh, inauguration. Yeah. They were like the only band that did. And I was like, OK, well, maybe they aren't as great as I thought. But okay. the band that I, I enjoyed then and I still enjoy half of their songs now uh, and I feel like they have a little resurgence coming right now, but Nickelback, uh, I was you there through the fan. I am half oh of a Nickelback fan, God. because if you look at a normal album, you either have the white trash songs, um, about like, you know, getting head on a dirt road or you've got <laughs> like, song? yes. Or, or lyrically there, there's some really good songs like on the, uh, I, so this is what I had pulled up to, oh, well now it's gone. Cause I had searched for other stuff. <laughs> Anyways, on every album, I would always like half of their songs. And I was there through the, the, what was it? The MySpace days when there was like the pickle, there was a fan page for a pickle. pickle and it's like more fans than Nickelback, the Nickelback. Which I guess they loved it, right? They loved that page. Um, the problem is not the problem, though. During this hate for Nickelback, which was like a, like a joke on a radio show that just no, kind of turned like into a, a thing. I think it was like MTV or something. It was an interview by a comedian. Yeah, and it just like threw it, and it just turned into a thing. Meanwhile, they were selling out stadiums in whatever town that they went to, so it like never really Hugely affected popular. them. Hugely yeah, popular. they were and they were pretty much on every single top forty radio band that a radio station that if you cycled through the radio at that time, anytime Nickelback would be playing, which is why it was this perfect storm when this one comedian went on an interview and said, "You know what I really hate Nickelback." That was literally <laughs> yeah. the tipping point, and it is why everyone started hating Nickelback. So if you ever hated Nickelback, you're probably just a Follower. Yeah, you sheep. sheep. I'm fine with being a follower. Here's the other thing. But, I don't think everyone would have hated Nickelback so much if I think it's partially radio DJ's fault. If they had come on every once in a while, people would have, would be like, oh, all right, whatever. But they they played that band to fucking death. Like Mari said, this is how you station. remind me. Yeah, one of the number one would, played you would songs. Try to scroll around the stations <laughs> to get away from Nickelback, and there would just be more fucking <laughs> Nickelback on the next station you flip to. You could not escape. <laughs> them and so radio dj it, it was partially that comedian and i i would say also partially radio djs that destroyed nickelback by and, overplaying and then, the out of them 
And then, uh, you know, come 2000, 2001, Spider-Man comes out with an amazing song called Hero on there, That's which everyone was nice. really into. And then that song only became more and more popular as like Spider-Man would get rebooted over and over. And it got to the point where it was such a popular song. Everyone loved the song and they wanted to use it as memes. I was like, it's Chad Kroger. It's the lead singer of Nickelback. You can't sit here and tell me you love Hero and not like Nickelback. Shut up and sit down. So, uh, and then call me Chris uh, on TikTok, started doing stuff, uh, uh, Chad versus Chad with Nickelback, which then brought them back to the limelight of people going, oh, I always loved them. I don't know uh, what Chad so, versus Chad is, but I'll look it up. Uh, she, she's like the number one TikTok creator, and one of her characters is uh, her, like a guy named Chad. And so, yeah, it was Chad versus Chad with Chad Kroger. Well, I don't I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I, I am in a band. <laughs> oh, keep, keep well, is, oh it, you, is, right is there right a link right down right below? Right. Are you? There, actually <laughs> you is. A, there is a link. Do you have well, a, like, does Mari's chair have, have an, anything to do with said band? Do you have an album coming out or so, anything? So yeah, I wanna, <laughs> one often asks themselves when they are in a rock band, at what point am I officially a rock star? And I like to use the Nickelback song to judge where I'm at. I, do, I have a, <laughs> do I have a drug dealer on speed dial? No, I don't. So I'm not there yet. I have a quesadilla. Uh, it's my favorite line in that song. And it's just like this weird throwaway non-lyrical line. It's yeah. the best. Mari, Lasercorn, cringy songs yeah, that you love. Yeah, how love? about or is it bands or songs? Well, it's bands, I, bands, bands, bands. Bands. Uh, how about a little a little pop punk, uh, Bowling for Soup. I'll still <laughs> listen to a nice Bowling for Soup. <laughs> Are they cringy? No, dude. Huh? They have a song called uh, uh, Life After Lisa, and I like to play that to myself. Oh. It's about a guy who's breaking up with a girl named Lisa, and he's like, thank God I'm not with Lisa anymore. There's no hair clogging up the drain. She's not making me go on hikes. Like, it's amazing. Perfect. <laughs> Do you like going on hikes? Yeah. Did you date the lead of singer of Bowling for Soup? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, okay, Mari, did you say it's not cringy? No, Bowling for Soup is 1985, right? Yeah. And and Springsteen, Springsteen, Madonna. Madonna. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a I cringy band. Nirvana. My brother and his cringy. cooler friends that listen to Nine Inch Nails always made fun of me. When he well, liked, anyone that liked when me, yeah. when I listened to anything, uh, listening to yeah. industrial rock, they are going they probably, to make fun yeah, they probably called it like got, a boy I, band yeah, and I like, like I got made laughed fun of at a you. lot for listening to that song, but I, I refuse. I'm like, I don't care if it's cringy. I'm going to listen to Bowling for Soup. During that time of like 2000 to 2008, when you had this pop, uh, punk rock like rise, punk. pop mm. punk. What did I say? Rock punk? I don't punk know pop? what you said. I've heard it both you ways. You were very close. Uh, next to right. Um, were any of those bands cringy? Well, I guess uh, you raised me a high, or uh, that one guy that did songs that was like secretly Christian songs. I guess those Creed? were cringy. Creed. Creed. But Creed was not pop punk. That yeah. wasn't pop. So yeah, so that 2000, 2008 pop, uh, pop punk. No, it's technically punk rock. Uh, Wait, there rock are punk. a couple pop, pop punk, punk secret punk religious bands trying to slip it in there reliant k um less less that era and less ever punky clear? Well, is ever clear, clear religious but, i think so and I but think were they was a little bit, owl city alternative but yeah. were they cringy though like even reliant still like those k bands weren't cringy creed was arguably the le the least cringy of the christian pop bands but uh, so yeah. Bowling for Soup, not cringy. Bowling Your taste is fine. Okay, well, I also liked, I went through a brief brief phase where I liked a dashboard confessional, so there. <laughs> oh, we all did. Come on. Oh, the sensitive side of laser cord. Maybe, and now uh, now it's off me. It's on someone else. Marty. <laughs> it's like, it's like he's crossing his arms and getting red. Okay, we found the guilty pleasure. Yeah, he's like trying songs. to give you give us a cool answer. He's like, I don't know, guys. Is uh, Bowling for Soup cringy? I don't know. Oh, my stuff's good, man. What can I, what can I say? Dashboard confessional. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mari, what was... confessional right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, my, my cringy band that I still stand by and still listen to to this day is Orgy, the band. I thought you were um, going to say Linkin Park. I'm like, you mm. people suck. Oh, Linkin Park is not cringy by, <laughs> by any means. No, Linkin Park's Orgy, awesome. Though, on the other hand, they call themselves a death pop band, and they're so theatrical. Um, it, it, they're, they're one of the bands where you're like you have to be like looking like this, 
And if mm. in order to like listen oh, to yeah, it or uh, just, you know, you, you, ha- you have to have the hair in front of your eyes type of thing. Um, Does this work with my beard? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. works with that beard. <laughs> You just look like a, a mop as a person. <laughs> <laughs> the human mop. Um, I am gonna I'm gonna call bullshit on yours, Mario. Orgy was cool. Orgy was definitely <gasps> not cringy. Yeah. Were you an cool. orgy fan? Yeah. I listened to some of their stuff, but I never they never came on. People who listen to Orgy did not get made fun of the same way that people who listen to Bowling for Soup did. <laughs> but by people who got made fun cool. of you, just mean your brother making fun of you. Yeah, my cooler brother. <laughs> No, it was a lot of the kids. Brother. Like I couldn't I could when I was driving around in my Pontiac Grand Am that I owned in high school, I could not put in my my burn CD with bowling for soup on it because no, any friend I was in the car with would rip me a new one for listening to bowling for soup. Yeah. That's well, just the way it was. Your older brother listening to 9 Inch Nails would probably No, younger brother. Give me cool. a pass uh listening to Orgy yeah. because it's a little bit more industrial, it's mm-hmm. a little bit more hardcore and it's not, you know, like your your little boy. Yeah, is anything that's house. industrial because I think just like when you're a kid or like that teenage that awkward teenage phase, like as long as it's industrial or like hard rock, like it's just inherently cool because of yeah. what it is. Maybe. It could be bad and it's still good. Oh, I know another one. Limp Biscuit. Oh Huge yeah, Limp that's Biscuit cringy. Fan. That's Ooh. cringy. Oh my yeah. god. I went to Limp Biscuit concerts by myself. Ouch. <laughs> I don't get Mari. I, I did like it. I did like them for a little while though, too. Not very well, safe. You but... wear jorts, so <laughs> yeah. Jorts jam. <laughs> uh uh, did you buy the Orgy album or did you have to ask your mom? To buy you an orgy oh, no. album. I, was, I, I I bought orgy by myself. I also used to buy Bush by myself. Um, <laughs> Why'd you really yeah. hit the U in that? Bush. Gotta. Bush. Yeah. <laughs> Bush was cool, though. Gavin Bush is Ross not Dale. not cringy. Good. Good music. Well, I see. Now I just don't know. I, so I grew up with my dad only listening to movie scores and my mom listening to either love songs on the coast or country music that makes sense. and like new country music at that time so i never knew what good music was um i had an, uh, a cd in my car that uh it said celine uh and it was the best of celine dion and i would tell people that it, it i misspelled sublime uh, no one believed it <laughs> no one believed nice. it <laughs> Uh, you just fun. went with I'm dumb. I'm illiterate. I'm dumb. That <laughs> yeah, was it was it was easier. You had a Celine Dion. <laughs> it's like, oh, I love Sublime. Can we listen to it? No. no. <laughs> Unless you want to hear me sing like some reggae. notes I can't reach. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys have any topic. favorite brands right now? Do people still have favorite bands like new favorite bands? Is that a thing? Do people have favorite music now? I'm a big fan of Royal Blood. They're kind of newish. I don't know if you know those guys. Mm-mm. They're no. like a duo, and one plays bass and one plays drums, and that's it. Huh? And you go and see their show, oh, and bass you're like, and how, drums. How are just mm-hmm. these two musicians like creating such amazing songs? So that's like that's the one I could that like I immediately go to of like a new favorite band. But yeah, you're right. It's it's like not as common to have like a yeah, because like ring. Spotify, you're just like pulling all of your favorite songs and listening to random. I like yeah, the yeah. Midnight. Shout out to the Midnight. They're pretty awesome. I'd like Spotify to go to an LA feels show. Like TikTok, like I listen to stuff and I don't remember a single thing. Yeah. Like I'm like I couldn't tell you who it was, who it's by. I listened to it and I liked it, and it's just it's gone into the ether. Yeah, I uh, I have one that I don't know if they're newer, if I if they just popped up on my radar. But the unlikely candidates, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of them. Check them out. They're at, they're really good. We should put uh, we should put together a shared playlist so we could all uh, recommend these bands because I would like to listen to some of these things that you guys are putting out there. I always love new music. Yeah, new yeah. Music. Spotify. Uh, so we'll make a Spotify playlist that's open. We can all add tracks to it. Um, well, so that's our first topic right there. If you're watching here on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. We've got links down below for all of Lisa Foyle's stuff that she's up to these days, and check out the Patreon for extra topics. And we've got a, another uh, podcast episode next week with Lisa Foyle. Stay tuned for that. Hey, thanks for watching, and thanks to all our patrons who help make this show possible. Uh, you can see their names over there, and you could get your name over there as well if you uh, check out uh, the, our Patreon in our description there. And also, uh, what am I? What am I saying? And also, uh, oh, and also, be sure to check out uh, Lisa Foyles, her band, and uh, her links are all in the description there. And we'll see you next time. Bye.